Hey, what's going on? I want to share some kingdom revelations, some deep stuff that God has been showing me. Psalms 91 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for it is He who delivers me from the snare of the trapper, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His pinions, and under His wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day of the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach me. I will only look on and see with my eyes the recompense of the wicked for I have made the Lord my refuge even the most high my dwelling place. No evil will befall me nor will any plague come near my tent. Why? For he will give his angels charge concerning me to guard me in my ways. They will bear me up in their hands that I do not strike my foot against a stone. A stone. I will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent I will trample down. Because I have loved him, therefore he will deliver me. He will set me securely on high because I have known his name. He will be with me in trouble. He will rescue me. And he will honor me. With a long life, he will let me see his salvation. Psalms 91 is packed with revelation that can absolutely transform your life. The first verse says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, My refuge, my fortress, my God, and you I trust, for it is you who... Who delivers me, deliverance, from what? The snare of the trapper or the bait layer is, 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 is what the actual Hebrew word says. So look, the psalmist is saying this. This was David. He said, a thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not approach me. He said, the pestilence cannot touch me. The serpent cannot touch me. The lion cannot touch me. Nothing can touch me. He said, you are my refuge, you are my deliverer, you deliver me from the bait layer, from the trapper, from the snares of the trapper. We know the trapper is Satan, is the enemy of our souls. So David had discovered something. He got a revelation. He said, as long as I'm dwelling in the shelter of the Most High, this is powerful, I will be abiding in the shadow of the Almighty and Satan cannot touch me. Dwelling in the shelter. So the key and the key to a deliverance, the key to being untouchable by Satan is dwelling in the shelter of the Most High. Because if you dwell in the shelter of the Most High, the covering of the Most High, you will abide in the shadow or the protection, the supernatural protection of the Almighty. And then angels will guard you and angels will protect you. Then he will deliver you from trouble. Then all of those promises in that chapter will be yours. So look, a lot of people are looking to get delivered. Okay, here's a, here's a nugget right now. The Holy Ghost is, is speaking to me. Jonah, Jonah, God spoke to Jonah. This is all going to tie together. Jo God said, look, Jonah, go preach to Nineveh. Jonah said, nah, I'm straight. I'm good. I'm going to go do what I want to do. I'm straight. So Jonah had a call of God on his life, right? God said, hey, son, go do this. Jonah had a different plan. Jonah went to Tarshish. All right, Jonah got on a ship, and he sailed off and did his own thing, right? And then the sea went crazy, this, that, the other. And all the sailors were like, yo, what's going on? We're going to cast lots, find out what the deal is. They cast lots, the lots fell to Jonah. They said, Jonah, what's going on? Who are you? Where are you from? What's the deal? He said, listen, I serve God. I'm running from God. And he said, look, if you throw me in the sea, all of this will stop because this is all, all this turmoil is on my behalf. Why? Because he was not where God called him to be. So there's people right now and you're being tormented by the enemy. You're going through trials you do not have to go through. And I'm going to tell you the trials and the torment is not going to stop until you go to Nineveh. So then they throw Jonah overboard, right? And then you got you to read the book of Jonah. It's four chapters. And then God sends a big fish to swallow him up and he delivers him. And then, and then he tells Jonah again after three days he said, Jonah, go to Nineveh. Now Jonah's ready to go. All right, he had to go through all that craziness. Now Jonah's ready to go, right? And then he goes and he preaches like 100,000 people hear the gospel. The whole city repents. It's amazing. And then he starts pouting like a little child. 
All right, so his attitude was still jacked up. But the point of the, of the, of the story is this. Psalms 91, David could literally run out against Goliath and slay him, take his head off with his own sword. David killed a lion, killed a bear. David could run up on, on 10,000 people and straight slaughter all of them and not die. But Psalms 91 is how he did it. He dwelt in the shelter of the Most High. He abided in the shadow of the Almighty. And I'm saying this because it's burning inside of me. Look, you're trying to get free. There's people trying to get delivered. They're trying to get free. They're trying to get God to bless their plan. They're trying to do their own thing. They're in Tarshish and they're wondering why the waves and the sea and everything is going crazy. Because you have a call of God on your life. Your blood bought. Your life is not your own. So if you try to do what you want, listen, you got to understand the kingdom, the kingdom revelation. Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. The Bible says that he is the, he is, that as we abide in him, we bear much fruit. He is the vine, we are the branches. And if we abide in Christ, we will bear much fruit. But it says, if you are not bearing fruit, God will cut you off and throw the branches in the fire and you'll be burned. He said, what good is a salt if it loses its flavor? It is good for nothing other than to be thrown underfoot and trampled by foot by men. So look, when you begin to understand the mysteries that are in the Bible, it says in Proverbs that you will be delivered through knowledge. Hosea says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So right now you're getting knowledge. You're getting understanding. But you have to apply the knowledge. The only safe place for somebody with the call of God on their life is the perfect will of God. That is the dwelling place. It's not just the prayer closet. Just, oh, I'm going to spend an hour a day with the Lord in the morning, read my Bible, worship, pray this, that, the other, win a soul here and there, but I'm going to do things my way. God's like, nah, bro, you ain't going to do things your way. You're going to do things my way. Because Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, but you do not do what I say? So get this, here it is. When you're not dwelling in the shelter of the Most High, you are in demonic jurisdiction. What does that mean? When you're not submitted to God, you cannot resist the devil. When you're not covered, you are in the jurisdiction. When you are in disobedience, James says if a man knows the right thing to do and he does not do it, to him it is sin. So if God has called you to do something, God has called you to be somewhere, God has called you to serve somewhere, and you're not doing it, one, you are sinning. And sin is what? Sin is opening the door, giving Satan legal access to torment you. So what's the answer? What's the solution? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. Okay? One, you don't exalt yourself. You humble yourself. Say, God, I need help. I messed up. I jacked up. I'm out of the will of God. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I let the enemy trick me. He deceived me. He got me out of the will. Repent. The Bible says if you confess your sins to God, he is faithful and righteous to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So one, repent to God. Two, take action because faith without works is dead. Do what you need to do to dwell in the shelter of the Most High. And Psalms 91, all of the promises, meditate on that, will be yours in Christ. Get out of Tarshish and get into Nineveh. This is so powerful. I'm telling you, humble yourselves, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit to God. One, you got to be submitted. You need a, a born again, Holy Ghost filled, powerful minister in your life. A pastor, somebody that is further than you, that can see farther than you. You need to be submitted and you need to be in community. You can't just hide in the prayer closet. You got to be in prayer and have a personal relationship, but you also have got to be plugged into community. You got to be in the middle of the fire. It's like a hurricane. The eye of the storm is the safest place. When you're smack dab in the middle of God's will, you cannot be touched. But as soon as you step out of the eye of the storm, all the winds and the waves start hitting you. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you breathe on your revelation. I pray for absolute grace, Father, for the people that need this to repent and Jesus for your blood to cleanse them and for them to make the changes and to get back in submission to humble themselves, Father, that you could deliver them and that they would get aligned with your plan for their life because it's only in the shelter of the Most High that they can abide in the shadow of the Almighty and in that place they have victory over the enemy and they're no longer in the jurisdiction of demons. In Jesus' name, love you, bless you, hallelujah.